everybody. Welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson, and uh, we are in the second part of a series, of a three-part series, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly uh, of Sierra Point. This is a deal that we just closed on, and um, yeah, last episode, if you're not listening to the uh, previous episode, go one back and listen to all the good stuff about this deal, and this episode, my friends, we are going to talk about the dirt, the things that went wrong. And I don't care how many deals you've been in, there's always some things that don't always go right. And so we want to talk about that a little bit. And then uh, on next week's episode, I'm going to have my partners, the ones that actually, one of some of my students that actually found the deal and partnered with us. And we're going to talk about a, a little other complications that we had in the deal too. And so it's a great story. It's a great way of what I think how deals come together and how you do this thing called multifamily investing. All right. So before we get started, though, a word from our sponsors. At Kahuna Investments, we partner with passive investors to create award-winning communities families love to call home. If you want to learn more about our company and our process, go to www.kahunainvestments.com and click the deal room. All right, we're back. So we're not going to waste any time. I'm going to jump into it. So, you know, last episode we talked about all the good things and it's a great deal. and It's in a great location. There's a lot of things working for Sierra Point in Tucson, Arizona, that had us smiling from ear to ear. Um, but now let's get into what happened. So typically, when you put a deal under contract, you've got around, we typically do a 30 business days. Now, keyword being business days. So that's 30 business days, by the way, is 45 calendar days. So 45 calendar days, due diligence period, and then also a 40, uh, 30 business day uh, close, close of escrow. So that's another 45 days. Followed by, we always put this in every contract, usually a 30-day extension. Because you never know what goes wrong. And in this deal, we're going to have to use this extension. Okay. So when we first went under contract, we had um, a great... We were actually looking to obtain a Freddie uh, Mac small balance loan. Okay, so um, maybe it was Fannie, but it was either Freddie or Fannie uh, agency debt, which is the best debt out there. That's the debt that you want to find if you can find it. It's, it usually has the best um, loan to value LTV um, that you can get, and it usually carries also some of the best interest rates. So, when in the hierarchy of best loans out there, agency debt is normally what you're looking for if you can place it now anything that doesn't qualify for agency debt then a lot of times it goes into what's called cmbs cmbs bs loans which again can be good not bad um but they tend to be a little bit more restrictive okay so um, now, and to get a agency to start the application process on a small balance loan um, is really not that much money. It's like, I think it was $12,500. So we're under contract. We go do our site visit. We do our, you know, our, in our quick three-day due diligence, we realize there's nothing, there is no red herrings. There's no things that are bad. So we're like, yeah, let's let's go ahead and start the application to get a loan. So that requires money, money, right? And so um, wire the twelve five. Now we're in Freddie's queue, and we're going down the um, timeline to close. Now we typically have again, like I said in the beginning, forty five days inspection period, and that's because we do a. It takes us a little minute. We actually put together a full um, build out of what it's gonna cost on our construction site so we really have an idea of what things are gonna cost us. Now, um, and you know, all the financial audits and lease audits and really try to figure out what's going on. So when we first started this property, we had, let's, let's talk about delinquency. So what is delinquency and why does it matter? 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, to also tell you, I kind of have a little bit of a stuffy nose. I'm gonna try not to hack and and snort here, but I might do it a couple times. So I'm hopefully my guys can edit it out. If not, you're stuck with me, baby. So we get into this process, um, and delinquency is usually when people don't pay, right? They're, you know, I'm not gonna pay my rent. Well. That, in a normal world, that happens, and then guess what we do? We evict, right? We just start the eviction process. Not a big deal, not not hard. Happens, very common. You try not to have, if, you're, if it's happening a lot, then maybe you're not screening the right tenants in, in the beginning. Um, so, you know, it, it wasn't really much of a problem. There was actually maybe one or two delinquencies. Okay, well, that usually just going to solve itself. But we get into the first 45 days. Now we got to go hard. So our money goes hard. And now we're in it for the next 45 days. Now that's three months, by the way. And in towards that last month, they, the bank's always saying, hey, send us your, you know, give us your, your P&L, your trailing P&L. And in that last one that we got, the delinquency, right, or concessions or bad debt, went from like, I don't know, two units to like seven. Now this is only an 84 unit property and seven units, right? So so 84 divided by, no, no, seven divided by 84 is 8%, almost 9%. And that's huge. So if you were at 95% occupancy, and you lose 8% because of non, you know, people not paying, now you're not in that 90% uh, benchmark that Freddie and Fannie, the agency debt, wants to lend on. So we went from initially having a great loan that was per perfect and beautiful to all of a sudden, through the operations of the property, we are now at seven people with high balances, credit. And the bank basically makes the decision that says, well, those are not, those are non, those are like empty units. Those are like vacants because they're not paying. And come to find out in, um, in that county, in, in Pinal County, right, for that property, um, or no, it's, maybe it's Gila County. I can't remember which one it is, but it's one, whatever Tucson's at. Um, they're a little bit more uh, liberal than like Maricopa County in Phoenix, and they have a moratorium, a rent moratorium that you you cannot evict people. And so what happens? Well, we can't evict them, and they've not paid. Now, here's the thing. Here's what. Here's the. Here was the challenge. Really, um, there was actually a lot of money in um, Pinell County for this for rent assistance. In other words, if the tenants would just apply, we, we could get them their payment and they could get they could get paid up. There was enough money out there to do that. Um, however, the management company that was working with them did not help the tenants fill out the paperwork. And sometimes you gotta help them fill it out, right? That's just how it works. And so we went from, hey, we got a great loan to um, 30 days, really, yeah, 30 days out of closing we don't have a loan. Wait, what? What? Now we don't have a loan? So now you're scrambling, dude. And and like, I can only tell you the feeling like when you think you've got something locked up great, then you all of a sudden like this little thing happens in the end. You're like, wait a second. And we started, I mean, we were hounding the last two weeks um, before we ran our last report is like, what are you guys doing? 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 Um, and then there's also this thing called seller coma. So in that when once we went under contract, I think the, the person that was managing the property quit. And so now there's not a full-time staff at the property. Um, there's just, it, it's just, it, sometimes it can be an absolute nightmare. And that was what was going on. So now we're not getting filled up as much. Like there's, and even to com compound it more in June and July, uh, when you look at the rental history, there's like 20 uh, renewals in June and 20 renewals in July. 
June and July, those two months were like, whoa, all the leases are right here. Now, now that tells the story, by the way. And when we actually saw this, we knew it was coming up. And so here we are pushing the management company saying, hey, how are we going to get through June and July? You're not staffed up. We got to make, we have to fill these properties or like we can't close. This is, you know, more. So then you start going into the legal issues of what does our contract say? What is the remedies? Um, because now it's not operating how it was when we first went under contract. It's way worse. Um, meanwhile, we got to go find a new loan. Well, what loans are out there? A CMBS loan. And we're like, well, we don't want to lock up in a kind of a bad loan for a longer period of time. That would be a little bit more expensive. So then you got to try to kind of get creative. And that's what we did is we said, well, let's just do a bridge, a bridge loan, a bridge to perm because the property will qualify. So what's the cheapest bridge loan that we can get? And actually this, this loan is going to be actually probably better. Why? It's because they decided to give us more money. They were going to lend us all the CapEx needed to um, refi our property. So even though it's the good, bad, and the ugly, it went from you know bad and ugly to back to good. That's how deals a lot of times happen is because that's what that's where the real work happens, by the way, is you got to start maneuvering and, and, and moving your pieces to make sure you get the outcome that you want. And so that's that's exactly what we did is now we're looking for new loans. OK, so, you know, what is our best scenario? Because this is a big lift. We're doing about seven hundred thousand dollars of capex on a small property 84 units that we can do re you know rather quickly and there's a good rent bump in tucson market um, once we do this work so we can do the work increase the value quickly stabilize it um, within two years and then refi back to that freddy note and so the loan that we end up getting was uh, a 4% bridge loan, 3.95 uh, bridge loan with uh, three years of interest only. So it actually is going to make us cash flow a little bit better because we only had, I think, one year or two years of interest only on the Freddie deal, right? So we get a little, one more year of interest only, so a little bit better cash flow along the way. And we got uh, more proceeds because they were going to give us um, not only the, the you know same LTV, but was going to finance our CapEx. Well, so that, that ends up being a win for us. And so, but it didn't feel that way in the beginning because when you're really, when you get to that loan process, and so um, we did have to use our extension because once you go searching for that new loan, you find it. Now we're like two weeks to closing. There's no way that we can close in time. So we had to exercise our 30 day extension. And, uh, you know, and, you know, sometimes it's everybody's like, when, when are we going to close? When are we going to close? When are we going to close? And that's why you build these extensions, in, by the way, because you just never know what's going to happen. And, you know, you know, things like this are going to happen, right? And sometimes it's expected, I guess. I always like, what's, what's going to go wrong in this deal? They never always go great, um, but, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they, they go really well. Um, but this just happened to be one that was something out of our control. And this is, I, I want to say this is what happens when the government gets involved in our business. Like we already have a process for non-paying tenants. And I, and I understand, don't get me wrong. I'm, I understand COVID's real. I had COVID. Um, I, I understand the ram ramifications of it. But we already have a process for non-paying tenants. And, you know, when I look around in my Phoenix and Tucson area, we don't have any problem with jobs. There's lots of jobs out here, right? So let our market correct itself. Let the market take care of the market. And so if we have to evict, let us be able to uncuff our hands because guess what? When those, you know, it affects, it affected me. What? And here's the part that I forgot to tell you. So when I had to go get that new loan with, uh, I think it's Ladder, or I can't remember the, uh, no, it's Trivian or something like that, uh, another lender, guess what their application fee was? $75,000. So 
So from twelve thousand five hundred to seventy five thousand dollars. What? Yeah, that's what a bridge loan will cost you. It's they're just more expensive loans, um, and you know it is what it is. So that was unexpected. So we're like, gosh dang, we gotta we gotta fund that, and we did. But like, still things like that can come up. Um, and so as we get get down the road uh, to this closing. Um, you know, you're, you're just working with everybody and you're trying to push everybody because it was a real deal that, that, you know, the property management company, and it's a nice one, one that I respect. Um, and they did a pretty decent job of keeping it filled up, even though like we were nervous as hell. Cause when you don't have a full-time person there, you're like, what's going on? And why aren't you trying to f fill that position? Well, they're like, well, we don't want to fill it. And then you guys leave and, and don't put in your person. You're going to put your person. And so the person we just hired now is gone. That affects us. So it was kind of as a really, it was kind of like a back and forth, a nervous struggle. And that's what happens when you have these contracts and everybody's a little bit nervous. Because we all want the same outcome. And that, that, was, that was what was cool was we all wanted the same outcome. Okay. And um, even in like negotiations with... Uh, Wayne Siegel, Wayne's, you're going to be hearing from Wayne in about three more episodes. Um, you're not going to want to miss that episode either because Wayne is an absolute, uh, he is good. He is my, um, he does all my red lines, all my contracts, my PSAs. He is that lawyer and he is so good. Um, but we negotiated hard on this one because we had to go through, um, we were working with a seller that, was had a legal department, but not really engaged with the legal department. So it was, it was really hard whether it was, I was working with the broker or the seller or trying to get, it was, we had to go through like three or four different channels to get on the same page. We finally did. And that's what a good lawyer will do is my lawyer is a deal maker, not a deal breaker. Um, but he also understands what my needs are and what I, what are my have tos are. And so we got all my have tos, which was like that 30 day extension, because you never know when things go wrong. And when they do go wrong, you want to have a, a place where you can push a button and make it happen. Right. And so that's what we did. Um, so at the end of the day, this deal comes back um, when we and we close. So we close on the property um, and we actually uh, found a great manager great manager um she's really good she's super smart um been in the business for a long time and every manager like people that manage these this is a c-class property built 1970 like two or something um but they like to be part of a good capital project that's really gonna move the needle on the property and that's what we were gonna do for this property and what we're doing now because we're already doing our painting and we're already involved in this asset quite a bit um, from the CapEx side, and we're going to make it beautiful. And so that manager is super excited to be a part of that piece. Um, so what was once old is now going to be new. And I think great managers like to be part of transition deals that make a lot of sense. And so this deal felt like it was going to go bad. Like to have your lending pulled from you right as you're going down, you know, down the final stretch is a, is very, um, I feel like it happens more often than not. I don't know why, but it just happens. And if everything doesn't line up properly, you can get into a spot where you've got, you've got to uh, be able to move and pivot. And so that, that was crazy, right? So, um, but we got through it and we won. And so now we have a great property that's we're in like two months in operations now and things are going really, really good. Uh, but it wasn't with a little bit of nervousness. And this one wasn't as ugly as I've had other deals. I've had other deals that even got way uglier. This one, when we did have to negotiate with the seller, they were amicable. It seemed to work and no, no one was doing crazy stuff. And everybody was wor working at a very high level of, hey, let's just get it done. Let's put the deal together. And so that, that my friends, is nice. And, and I'll attest that to our broker relation, right? So my student, Scott Maleska, found a broker and made friends. And we, we did good, right? 
Now, it doesn't mean that we had to like sometimes say, hey, this is BS, right? Sometimes you got you to call them out for what it is. What you see is wrong. But for the most part, like it was a su- successful deal. And here's the truth. And I want you guys to hear me on this. Anytime you close, all sins of the Father are forgotten. Brokers have short memories. All they remember is you put something under contract, you closed, and you got them paid. Thank God, right? Because if they had to remember about the labor, and that's the part that keeps me up at night, I always think about the labor when I'm doing these deals. (laughs) But the broker, they don't go there. They just think about the paycheck and the start and the end. Thank God. Because, uh, you know, things get a little squirrely, but as long as you can uh, do what you're going to do and, you know, contract and close, that broker will look at you and you do it with a very, um, with professionalism, they'll want to do business with you again. And that, my friends, is the name of the game of getting those brokers to like, trust you and, and want to use you again, because that is the magic when it happens in this business. It is beautiful. And it is like an everlasting gobstopper. Okay, we all need a couple of those um, in our lives. Things that will keep us throwing us deals to uh, reward us time and time again. Right? Guys, it's been a uh, a pleasure talking about, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly on the Sierra Point deal. This one wasn't as ugly as some of my other deals. Uh, Thank God. I like like them when they're a little bit easier. Um, But we're going to hear next week from Scott and Willaska. Um, Scott Dilley and and, uh, Waleska and and Iglesia uh, talking about their experience from their perspective as new uh, students going to get their first big multifamily deal because I'm sure I missed out some points that they were like holding their breath on Um, because I've done it so many times now I just kind of think oh this is the way it is and uh, so we're going to hear from them next week and get from their their perspective on what really went down so Looking forward to that. Guys, listen, you can be anything you want in this business. You can obtain everything that you want, but you got to put your mind to it. You have to believe. You have to say to yourself, I am. Draw your line in the sand. Get motivated. Get inspired. And go out and live your best life. Guys, if you believe it, you can achieve it. And your paradise is possible.